Hello, my name is Laurent Butre and today we are going to set up a service desk queue in SharePoint. So if you go to your site content and add an app, we are going to create a discussion board. If you haven't got a SharePoint already, you can watch my previous video on how to provision a SharePoint in 10 minutes. So search for discussion board and that's actually a list in SharePoint uh, where you can have incoming email and that's the trick that we're going to use today. So name your service desk queue list uh, that you just selected the discussion board and now you have in the recent, recent uh, list the service desk. Uh, let's do what we did on the previous video. Uh, let's pin it to the uh, left uh, menus. So here you can say add to the quick access bar, quick launch. Okay, save that information. Okay, so now we have the service desk uh, queue. Let's add a column with uh, the person that will be uh, taking care of the case. So uh, let's put here assign to or handle, let's say handle by. Okay, I will select a person because I want to receive email when uh, the task is assigned. Put a little description if you want. That will help. Okay. So the team member taking care of the request. Once all the options are selected, click OK and that will create a new columns to your list. Okay, so now that's all the default columns that came with that discussion board. Let's play with the incoming email. So now in uh, SharePoint, uh, as it's a discussion board, you can allow incoming email and you can select whatever uh, email you want at that domain. You can create another uh, email on your domain, on your company, uh, just make it redirect to that uh, address and uh, every email coming in will be uh, saved uh, as an attachment. Uh, you want to save the original email, that's always handy. And here the most important thing is you have to say accept email messages from any sender. Uh, that allows uh, an email to come in even if the person is not a member authorized to write on that list. So in basically anonymous uh, or any person on the internet could send an email to that address and be saved into the SharePoint. So now I'm going to create a status because uh, once the request arrives and is recorded into the discussion board, I want to uh, make sure that uh, only one person is working on it. So here I'm going to um, put a choice. Uh, for example, the request can be a new request. Uh, the request can be on hold, uh, waiting for some information. Uh, it can be in progress. Uh, that's better to put it before. And so basically it's handled by someone. It can be closed or canceled. Uh, basically, you can create whatever uh, statuses you want for your list. I will pick up the default to be new. That's what uh, is going to be put any time a new email comes in. Okay, so now I have a status uh, as well on the list. Uh, I have a field to mark it for someone. And here's are the different views. And what I like is to set the management view, which is basically the list of everything. And I put it as a default. So that will be the view uh, of that discussion board. And I will add the handed by, as well as the status is um, fields that are created. The other thing is that once um, the request has been handled and closed, I don't really want to see it on the list, so I can filter the elements on that list. Here I will say the status is not equal to closed, and in that case any other status will be displayed on my list. Uh, this is also a quick and, and very convenient way uh, to see what needs to be done on the list. Many options, you go through it, see what you can do on that view. So now here's my default view for my service desk. 
uh, and I have all the columns that I've set up and defined. So this is the default. Uh, okay, so now let's do a test and uh, write an email to that email address that you created and then uh, type some uh, information about it. So inquiry about your product number, let's say 35. Uh, so I'm a customer or I'm someone from uh, your company that uh, needs to address a request to the service desk to that queue. Uh, could be a way to uh, manage uh, suppliers. You want to send uh, information to your suppliers and uh, see who is replying and make sure that everybody uh, got uh, taken care of, that's a way to actually centralize that information. It also avoids to share a mailbox between uh, your team members. Uh, they just uh, go to the SharePoint and all the information is there. Uh, the good thing also, if you watch my previous video, uh, on how to link these uh, lists to Outlook, a discussion board can be linked to your Outlook. So uh, once uh, the list is set up, you can forget about it and actually access everything from your Outlook mailbox directly. Okay, so refresh the list, the email went sent uh, and got received by the SharePoint. Uh, so now let's say it's a new uh, item that just came, came in, I want to work on it so I can edit that and I will be able to put my name uh, into the handle. I say it's in progress because I'm working on it and uh, I type my name, it will find who has access to that list and propose that. So now I saved it. But okay, so that's just to say uh, I saved it and uh, I'm taking care of that, but maybe I want to follow up on extra information. The nice things with uh, SharePoint is you can always add later on information. Also, here I'm setting up an alert because I don't want to go on the SharePoint every five minutes. Uh, so I can tell SharePoint if there is a new item, added, modified, changed, whatever, uh, send an alert right away. Or I could have a daily um, summary of it as well, or weekly summary. Okay, so that's my alert um, that has been set. Uh, here's the item. Um, I can see the original email if I want to. But let's say I want to add uh, another column, another information to uh, record what I have been doing on that. So let's say I have a follow-up uh, column that I'm just creating for action. Uh, I will put that as a multiple lines. I can select how many I can see. Um, so below you see there is a number of lines uh, for editing, for, uh, for editing. So it's six. Uh, you can actually write more than six lines, just the size of uh, the window where you type stuff. Okay. So now I have an extra field in my view. Uh, I have to make sure that it is uh, added in my um, uh, default view, which is, uh, which is the case. And now if I go back to my service desk queue, I can see and edit uh, what I've been doing on that. So it's a great way for your team to follow up, uh, be uh, informed of what has been done by someone else, avoid duplicating the work, having two persons working on the same item. Any email coming in with the same subject will actually be grouped into the same discussion board on the same item. Uh, it's also very efficient uh, to, uh, to follow up. And if you um, copy yourself or copy the distribution list to any answers that you do the customer, it will be recorded there. The last thing that I want to do on that list is the versioning. Uh, also very important when uh, you want to keep trace of what has been done and when uh, so to come back and improve your processes, you can activate that versioning. So what it does is that for every item, you can click on it and then view the history and every changes will be actually tracked there. So a great way to improve your team efficiency. Uh, this is the third uh, video. Uh, we have other videos on the YouTube channel. So uh, feel free to uh, subscribe to that channel and see how you can create a collaborative site on SharePoint or if you don't have a SharePoint, uh, create your own SharePoint. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that video. Have a good day.